to spend the morning with you and share with you this morning. As I've told, <clears throat> as I've told my kids and, and most of the youth over the years, um, pretty much every worthwhile thing I've learned in my life has been from this building and, uh, and been from, from the shepherd over my life and, and you people speaking into me and my family. So I, I am, I'm very, very appreciative and grateful and love you all. Are you ready to get in your Bible this morning? Yes. I want you to go to Matthew 4. Yes. Matthew 4. Amen. Matthew chapter 4, verse 4. Just kind of keep your, keep your hand there for a second. Um, I'm going to do some of you a favor. It's 1123. It is a very, very vivid clock. And I will not let you go uh, in duress this morning. But we are going to talk about some food. So you might have to push through a little bit. You might have to stave that hunger slightly. Um, But it's going to be good. Amen. So speaking of food, no matter what, no matter who you are, no matter uh, what part of the world you live in, food, food has some sort of importance in your life. You have some sort of relationship with food. Amen. Amen. And whether it's, um, I don't know about you, but when I was a kid, I didn't go see my, my dad's grandparents, excuse me, my, my dad's parents very often. But when we did, there was, there was always this staple of, oh man, uh, grandma makes banana nut bread. And it was like slightly gooey in the middle and had just the amount of nuts because if it's too much nuts, it's gross. But and you all, but you just, just lay that on every single person here. We all have... Oh man, I'm going to grandma's house and there's going to be that, that, that staple banana nut bread. Or my kids, they go over to Melissa's parents' house and uh, Papa, as they call him, always has the, the container of goodies that sometimes gets refilled. And you have to go investigate what's in there. It's, your, your visit is not complete until you've done that. There's that expectation, amen? Or, you know, maybe it's a, a dinner at Aunt Jessie's house on a Sunday morning. I have no idea. But everybody in here... Everybody in here has experienced what it's like to go, well, I'm going to so-and-so's house. They're known for having such and such thing on, on demand or on the shelf, or they just baked it, and I can't wait to get there. I cannot wait to, put, to sink my teeth into that thing. Amen? And your mouth starts, like before you cross the, the threshold, your mouth is already watering because there's that expectation. I, some of you are hurting. <laughs> Some of you are like, please stop. But, but this is our relationship with food, amen? And before you even go in the door, you can feel that saliva start to generate. And you're thinking, where's the fork? Where's the napkin? Because you've rehearsed it. Before you got there, you knew, man, I, I hope grandma put another loaf in the oven. Or, man, I wonder what Grandpa put in the container today. And you're rehearsing it in your mind. And before you've even gone in there, you've seen yourself eat it. Amen? You've seen yourself take the knife and cut kind of a ridiculous portion off, right? You've taken the butter pad and you've gone, like, okay, maybe this is like three squares deep and scooped it. And, yeah, you've done it already. You've already rehearsed it in your mind. Right. In the culinary arts, they put so much um, culinary being like food and stuff. Right. Food. Yeah. They put so much preparation and so much training into presentation. Are the colors right? Does it look good? Do I want to eat it in a magazine? Right. Do you eat with your eyes? Yes, sir. Are you following the Holy Ghost this morning? It looks so good, and it adds to the experience because in your mind, you've already tasted it. Before it entered your mouth, you've already consumed it. Amen? Food's a powerful thing. And we all have those go-to meals. You know, you ask, you're doing your, your uh, grocery planning or whatever, and you ask your kids what sounds good this week. 
And there's always the same eight or ten requests that come up and, and revolve around because it's what you know. It's what you like. It's what you've built an appetite for. Amen. It's what you've built an appetite for. I asked the kids this, the, the teenagers, a few weeks back. I got some pretty weird responses. But uh, from the Coon House, one of them is Dorito Pie. We'll come back to that later. You can ask Melissa what that's about. But... We all have those go-tos because we, we know what they are. We're so familiar with how they taste, right? We look forward to it every time we think about it, and we've already eaten it before, really, before we even put the ingredients together. We've already eaten it in our mind. <clears throat> so, husbands, we're going to tell on ourselves here a second. Or young teenage boys who raid the pantry. So has, has anyone in here ever had a mom or husbands, your wife, has made this plan and she's got this dinner together and the preparation's already made, but you might have stopped by Arby's on the way home first? <laughs> Bit, what, huh? Oh, yeah. yeah, oh yeah, oh yeah. Because the advertising of the Jamocha shake from Arby's was too luring from the highway and you've eaten it in your mind so much that you put the blinker on and you got off the exit and, and then you get home having been fully satisfied and you walk in and just the aroma of the house is, oh man, I am not telling my wife what I do. <laughs> <laughs> you've been there. You've been there. Hallelujah. You've been there. And it happens. But is, don't, you, don't you feel like, man, I just, that was so dumb. Like, why did I give into that? You know, this thing is here, this, this lovely meal is here, and she worked hot, hard on it, or mo- maybe uh, you youngins, mom worked hard on it, or dad worked hard on it. Um, some of you moms get told on. Some, some of you teenagers, your teenagers have revealed to us that uh, they much prefer the dad's cooking. Um, all secrets are safe, but uh, not, not to look around. But, um, but man, I spoiled that thing. And I gave into that, that, that junk, right? And I spoiled that thing, and I'm not hungry anymore. And you spoil that appetite. And that thing that you look forward to and that you knew was going to be good, that, you, that, that you, were, you were looking forward to, you just kind of put a damper on it. But because you're polite and you're not a stupid husband, uh, <laughs> Melissa's not here this morning, by the way. <laughs> Yeah, because you're not a stupid husband. Oh, that looks great. And you get your normal help. You may, like, don't get quite your normal helping. And you, you take several bites and, and uh, because you're polite and all this and you're not stupid. Um, and you take your modest serving and you don't enjoy it like you would have originally um, because you, you, you want to participate. But the truth is you can't. You can't. You don't have the room. You don't have the room. Those milkshakes are like 30 ounces or something. Like the big ones are, yeah. They're big. You can't. Um, I was helping a friend of mine do some uh, digging in his backyard, and it was so hot. And I, I just remember pounding these huge glasses of water and I'm thinking three, four, five, six, seven, eight. I'm like, where is all this going? Like, there's no, like, I, I, I know how much the, you know, you can't exactly hold a gallon of water. I, I know I've crushed a gallon of water. Where is all this stuff going? So, but, you know, you're outside, you're working, you're sweating. It just kind of, kind of, I was thinking about this preparing for, um, preparing for this morning. But as you need it, you're consuming it, Right? Here's, uh, here's something I want, I want to just sink in a second. There are only two kind of people that do not eat. The full and the dead. They don't eat. No matter what you put in front of them, they don't eat. And I'm not talking about, I'm not talking about gorging, I'm not talking about disorders and stuff. That's not, I'm, just, I'm just saying in general, broad strokes, The only two people that don't eat are those who are full and satisfied and those who are dead. Amen? 
I had a conversation with Pastor. Um, it's been a couple months now. And, and, and to, to set the, the question, because I asked him a question. So to set the stage for the question, all of you understand what it's like to come in this sanctuary after pastor's been gone, maybe out of state, out of the country, there's been a big trip going on. And every single one of you in here know what it's like to have, oh, pastor's back. There's going to be an expectation. I wonder, I wonder how good it's going to be this morning. I, well, not I wonder. I know it's going to be good this morning because pastor's back. Now, we love our pastor, and you should. Amen? Everyone in, everyone in the church in America should love their pastor to pieces. But you and I can, can specifically agree on this fact. Everyone knows what that's like to come back in this sanctuary with our man of God, our shepherd. He's been gone. It's going to be good. And I asked, and that honestly, that kind of bothered me on, on a personal level. And, and I asked him, I was like, why is that? Why is it that, of course, we, we, love, we love you and, and we love to receive you back. Of course, we know that there's a specific kind of charge, you know, that, that, that the gifts are flowing and, and you're operating in this mandate that's, that's not just the local church, but there's a whole other part of you at, at work. And like, I understand that. But for me personally, I go to church here. But for me personally, what's my problem that it's different from you've been here three months in a row to you've been gone almost a month and now all of a sudden my light bulb's on. What's going, what, what, why, why is that? What's wrong with me? And here's the response. There's only a few variables. This is a, uh, this is kind of a condensed version of what Pastor said. It's like, well, there's only a couple of variables. There's God, and He never changes. So that one's out. There's the anointing that's available at all times to heal, to minister, to reveal. So that's out. There's the man, there, there's, there's the gift in the house. Pretty much, I'm pretty much sure I'm the same man no matter what continent I'm on. And then there's the people and what they have already decided. And I just kind of sunk in my, <laughs> in my seat a little bit thinking, man, ouch. <laughs> there's the people and what they've already decided. And I don't mean that in, in some, some way like, like we, choose to, um, we choose to ignore or, or not be attentive or any, anything like that. But I, I'm just, I was looking at from at a personal view. There's God who never changes. There's the anointing that's always available. There's, there's the man of God. And then there's what I've already decided. I know for a fact, just speaking for me, right? Sample size of one. I know for a fact that when pastor comes back from ministering or comes back from overseas or, or, or something, I, I already know, I can already hear out of my own mouth, Melissa and I have already spoke, it's going to be good this morning. It's going to be good this morning. It's going to be good this morning because pastor's back. And we've already built this expect, we've already eaten it in our mind. This makes sense? We've already consumed this thing in our mind and heart and we haven't even come through the door yet. Make sense? Matthew 4.4. Uh, we'll, start, we'll start in verse 3. And when the tempter came, and when the tempter came to him, he said, If thou be the Son of God, command these stones be made bread. But he answered and said, It is written, Man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeds out of the mouth of God. You know, one of the most... Um, one of the most basic checkpoints or barometers or um, points of, of interest that deal with people's health, say you're, you're in the hospital, you're having some treatment done, whatever, uh, there's, there's always that line of, well, are, are, are they eating? Are they taking food? 
are they eating? And that's always a checkpoint for, are, are they doing well or, or do we got problems? Are, are they on the uphill climb? Are we in recovery mode or, or are we still doing major work here? What's going on? And you wait for that report. Yes, they're eating. Yes, they're taking fluids. Everything, everything's looking okay right now. They're on the upward stretch. And you think, okay, great, great. They're, they're consuming food. It is the same way. It is the same way in the spirit. You have people who are taking food and people who are not. And there's only two kinds of people that don't eat, the full and the dead. Amen? Amen. Let's get a little quiet in this Baptist church tonight, this morning. Hallelujah. It's one of the most basic things. Are you eating? Great. Everything's going. We know the nourishment is going in. We know the water and the fluid is going in. We know that you have the building blocks to live because you're eating, Right? And if they're not, this per, we, it's just as soon, as soon as they stop, as soon as the nutrition stops coming in, whether it's through a vein, whether, it's, whether they're eating it, as soon as it stops going in, we know now we're on the clock because as things go, it's just going to wither. It, you, you, you can call it from a mile because it works the same way. And, and we can call it like this in the, in the spirit. As soon as we stop taking food, start your timer. Because you're on the downward incline. Make sense? You're on the grade already. So let me ask you. Are you being careful to take spiritual food? Are you being careful to make sure that the nutrients are coming in? Are you being sure that you're getting the building blocks you need to live? Are you taking the washing of the water? Or are you full? Are you full? And full looks like many things. It doesn't mean that you're backslidden with a needle in your arm in an alley. Full could mean, well... You know, sports have just been really, really, really heavy the last few months. I didn't have time for it. Full could mean, well, you know, God said, let all things be decent and in order, so my lawn has to be immaculate. Um, And all all those things. But No, seriously. Full full is whatever that we've put in front of God. It's whatever that we ate first before getting here. And I'm not saying you're condemned because you went through Starbucks or you went through McDonald's in the way. That's not what I'm saying at all. I'm saying the spiritual food that we eat here. Why was I eating it in my mind before I ever stepped through the door this week and it was an afterthought the last month? Why am I only, you know what I'm saying? Because when you look forward to it, when you have the appetite, you eat it twice. It's already done in your mind before you've consumed it in your body. And here's the same way. We've already rehearsed it with our spouse. We've already talked about it with our kids. It's already been mentioned in the car on the way over Sunday morning. Pastor called us out the other day. Remember when he said you want to make your Sunday mornings easier, get, get, uh, get ready on it Saturday night? And I'm thinking to myself, well, Melissa must have text Pastor. So, <laughs> you know, I, we're all the time telling the kids, get your stuff ready. here. I haven't even picked out my tie. I wonder why you're stressed out. Wonder why we're full. But it could be anything. I mean, just, just in our household, this is the end of a, of, of a pretty heavy baseball season. Like today are the last games. And even like this whole week, Melissa was just telling me, uh, Levi's our, our middle son, if you're not familiar with all our kids, and they were, they were telling, basically begging Melissa, like, you've, got to, you've got to let him play on this thing. You've got to let him play on this special team. He's so good. He's so good. You've got to let him. And we're, and we're just thinking, you know, It's just, that's not what we want to be full on. I can't, we cannot commit all that. They overlap sometimes. Sure, you got a champion, you know, yeah, we'll we'll be flexible, sure. And I've I've seen it done with Josh. I've seen it done with other people. Uh, You know, and 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 we tell the, the teenagers all the time, listen, if you come in here 10 minutes late and stinking, still get here. I don't care if you're, if, if you still got your, your gear on, or you can sit in the back. We got spray deodorant. You'll be fine. <laughs> You'll be fine. Haven't I, Lila? 
You come in late. You come in late dripping. We'll find some way to deal with you. But at least you've displayed to God, to this house, to me, to your peers, that you made a priority to get here and feed on the necessary building blocks that you need. Amen. You made it a point to be in the house of God. So are you taking on food? Are you taking on the water? Are you taking on the washing of the water? This is something that, um, let's go to Philippians 3. Philippians 3, 18. I was thinking and meditating on, on all this about being full and in so many ways, in so many different seasons of my life, you, you can just get full on things that don't help you, on things that are not the most important, and you've mixed priorities around, and you're just full. And this verse came to me, and I just wanted to share it with you. Philippians 3, 18, 19, and 20. For many, for many walk, of whom I have told you often... And now I even tell you in tears that they are enemies of the cross of Christ, whose end is destruction, whose God is their belly, and whose whose glory is in their shame, who mind earthly things. For our conversation is in heaven, from whence also we look for our salvation, the Lord Jesus Christ. I'm telling you, verse 19 whose end is destruction, whose God is their belly, their appetite. Your your translation might say appetite. That one's in there too. So let's say it that way. Whose God is their appetite, whose glory is their shame, who are mindful of earthly things. And I'm just thinking to myself, how many times have I let my own family build an appetite? It doesn't have to be gross. It doesn't have to be blatantly sinful, but I'm, but I'm just saying, how many times have we let our own families or, or, or us personally build such an appetite for just the things that don't matter, the things that are not going to provide the life of God in our life? They're not going to bring in the protection of God. They're not going to create and foster an atmosphere of worship. They're just not going to do it. But yet we've built an appetite for these things. And here, here we have the scripture itself pointing out Pretty plainly for everyone to see, these people who let their appetites rule them, who let whatever their cravings are be their God, Jamoka Shake. Watch out, man. Watch out. Whose God is their belly? They're full of earthly things. Their mind is so consumed with, man, I got to get to the ball game. I, I, I got to get this report done. I, I, I got to get the lawn mowed. I got to get the, every last bit of, of dust off the floor. I, are you living there at all? Is it, can you identify with any of that? Anyone have kids in here with sports? Anyone? Okay, three people. Liars. Okay. <laughs> Anyone grow up in a house where your parents are neat freaks and you're like, you know, brushing the dust off the fake leaves with toothbrushes? I'm te- there is a level where you are full with things that don't matter and things that don't help you. And you're full. Whose end is, is destruction, whose God is their appetite, whose glory is their shame, who are minded on earthly things. There is a real danger. There is a real concern that we, that we must protect ourselves of every time we come on a Wednesday night, every time, we, every time we go to bed Saturday evening, every time we get back in the car at 4.30 to come to evening, evening service. Am I full? Am I so full on everything else going in? Is there any room for God to say anything to me, to fill me up whatsoever? Do I have any room inside this heart, this life, this conversation, this car, whatever? Is there any room left for God to put his first things first in my life? Or am I full? 
Because we can come here, I mean, just, just, like, just like the old covenant in, in Kings, when Elisha told the, the, the widow lady with the boys, you find as many empty vessels as you can. You go borrow them, you plead for them, you go get as many of them as you can, and you bring them all in here empty, and I'm going to fill every last one of them. And as soon as they were all full, it stopped. Same thing with us. We can come in here ready to go and just, you know, participate and be full and be in the atmosphere. Or we can come in here ready to go knowing God is going to speak. Things are going to happen. Hands are going to be laid on me. The effectual prayer of righteous men and women are going to avail much in my life today. God's going to speak from heaven through my shepherd. And you can leave full. 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 Not just peppered or seasoned. Full. Amen? Amen. So, this is how we develop this appetite again. Is this okay on a Sunday morning? All right, you're pretty quiet. Just making sure I'm not bombing here. So, Psalm 63, 1 through 4. God, you are my God. I search for you. I search for you. I thirst for you. As in a dry and weary land where there is no water, I have seen you in the temple. I have seen your strength and glory because of your loving, because your loving kindness is better than life. I will praise you. This is someone who has tasted the banana bread before. Does this make sense? This is someone who's been acquainted with what's Papa hiding, hiding in the jar. What's grandma bacon in the oven? As soon as I get there, I know this is going to be available to me. This is someone who's familiar with the working of God in the house. I have seen, I have seen God. I've seen you in your temple. I've seen the strength of your glory. I've seen it work in lives around me. I've heard the testimonies of my peers. I've seen the laying on of hands produce miraculous result. I've I've heard about, I've heard about the... um, Praise, uh, the praise reports of we all corporately agreed, we all laid hands, and this thing moved in their life. I've seen, I have seen the strength of your glory, and because of be, all, this, all these things, they convinced me of your loving kindness, and because of this, I will praise you. The way to crave the best burger of your life is to have the best burger of your life. Don't worry, we got 10 minutes. I'm telling you. The way to crave the best burger of your life is to have the best burger of your life. The way to crave a loving God is to experience a loving God. It's to be in the house of a loving God, among the people of a loving God, under the shepherd of a loving God. It is to be in the atmosphere and to taste for yourself that the Lord is good. Amen? To taste for yourself. Psalm 34, 8, taste and see that the Lord is good. Do it for yourself. If you're looking at your peers or your brother, brothers and sisters in Christ around you, and you're like, I would like some of that praise report in my life. I would like some of that blessing in my life. You, we're in the same family, man. Taste for yourself. Get in there yourself. Ask him, what, what verses are you on? What, 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 how, how are you praying? Are, are you and your husband agreeing over this? Or like, what, what are you doing? Go and taste for yourself that the Lord is good and see what he'll do in your life. Amen? So, what's the difference? There's the God factor. That's not going to change. There's the anointing that's always available. Even New Testament. Jesus ran into this, Remember? And the anointing was there to heal them all. And none. None got touched. Amen? May that not be our testimony. In Jesus' name, may that not be our testimony. So those two are out, right? You've got the man of God. I'm pretty sure our pastor is highly qualified to shepherd you as difficult as you are. (laughs) You got it. But then there's what have we already decided? 
What have we already decided walking in, waking up Sunday morning, going to bed Saturday night? What have we already decided? What have you already eaten in your mind? Chris didn't know it. He was flowing the Holy Ghost up here about, about throwing it up on the screen. What is God going to do for our family? What are we going to do for God? How is God going to use our church? How is he going to move in our lives today? Throw it up there on the screen. Are you in expectation of anything? I, I know what I'm of in expectation of when I go to certain people's house because their cooking is good. Amen? What have we already decided? Did you eat it already in your mind or did you just, are you full? Are you full? 1 Corinthians one twenty seven. But God has chosen the foolish things of this world to confound, to confound the wise. And God hath chosen the weak things of this world to confound the things that are strong. It doesn't really make sense in a natural sense. Well, we're coming here to be fed? Yes, absolutely. Stick versus ocean. Which one won? The staff of Moses, right? You're coming in here every, every Sunday, every Wednesday, and you are pouring yourself out and you're making sure there is, there is room for God to do something in, in this vessel today. I, whatever the Holy Ghost says, I'm not just letting it bounce off me. I'm not just walking out of here in the residue of worship. I'm going to have it inside of me. I'm going to have the, word of, the words of God resonating in me not just on me and around me. I'm going to take it home for myself. I'm not going to be full on every other thing, on every other political viewpoint. I'm going to be full of what my God says to me and my family and my kids today. Amen? I'm going to live strong. I'm going to live long. The Lord's going to provide and open windows of heaven for me. Are you full? Amen. Kind of winding down here. This is why we have the verses. This is why we have the verses. If you seek me early, you'll find me. Because you're not full of the day yet. Amen? Seek me early and you will find me. Put me for, it's the first commandment. I am the Lord your God. You'll have no other gods before me. Amen? Don't, even Joshua said it to his folks. Look, if you're full of the gods uh, in the land of the Amorites where you live, and if you worship everything that they worship, great, you got your choice. If not, we're serving the Lord, right? Seek me early and you'll, and you'll find me because you're not full of the day and everything coming your way. And essentially, 1 Samuel Two Psalms 91, 14, John 14, 21. They all say basically the same thing or in the same fashion, which is, I love those who love me and those who seek me early and diligently will find me. I don't know about you, but when I come into this house, as I have so many years, I still want to be able to find my God. I don't want to be so full of what other people say and what other people said was important and other people's opinion, I don't want to be so full of earthly things that I don't want to be so chasing after appetites that are not my God and is not going to help me live that I showed up here full and I can't receive. Amen? I don't want to have already decided, basically. First commandment, I am the Lord thy God, and you shall have no other gods Before me. Hallelujah. Got three minutes to spare. So, for those of you who are in desperate need of lunch, your redemption draweth nigh. I hit you with a lot burgers, banana bread, um, Jamocha shakes. Praise God. Hallelujah. I'm going to be closing down here in a second. Paula, if you, want to, if you and your team want, want to join me, I, I just want to encourage you guys. Don't let anything stave your appetite for the house of God. Don't let anything become more 
um, what's the word I'm, ser- I'm searching for? Don't let anything become more appetizing to you as far as you living and being successful on this planet in these last days and your covenant with Jesus Christ. Don't let anything be more appetizing that keeps you out of this house or that somehow separates you from the voice of your shepherd. Because I, I had a conversation with someone recently and they said, They said, um, well, I just got all these questions. I, I got all these deep questions. I'm not sure, you know, I don't know how to navigate it. And I'm thinking, I'm pretty sure you've got a man qualified to go swim through these deep waters, brother. Uh, it, he's, he's called your pastor. <laughs> he's a flesh and blood man that you can touch and that you can, you, you can have a conversation and you can have that voice. And then there's that thing, well, how do I know? And, how, you know, you can't trust everybody. I was like, listen, man. There, as far as me and my family, there is one person on the planet, one, that will stare Jesus Christ in the eyes and not only give an account for me, but give an account for everything he said to me. That's a special kind of fear. I'm telling you, don't let anything contaminate the voice of your pastor in your life. Nothing. Don't let anything Quell your appetite for the voice of God. And if you feel full, if you feel full, doesn't mean you're in sin, doesn't mean you got some gross thing going on, but life will pack up on you. And if you're full, you're still full. So dump that stuff off. I can't play that game. We can't commit to that schedule, I'm sorry. That's not my priority. If I give you the first place, I'm going to displace the voice of God in my life. Amen? Don't give anything God's first place. Let it have first place. Don't let anything quell your appetite. Amen? Hallelujah. Well, we're going to close. Um, Shannon, if you and the other elders would, would join me at the front.